It's not just you. No one wants kids anymore. Are we going to find out the answer to that statement? It's not my statement. I'm just reading the title of the video, but I'm curious since it resonates with my mind state. So let's see what they talking about, man. Let's see what's cooking. 1960, they were busting mad babies. Lovely. Yo, if they want to solve this problem, cut the damn taxes. <laughs> Wait, bro been alive since, since 1946? What? God damn, my They spent $3 billion to get niggas to bust some nicks in these girls. What did he say? Hey. Oh. record low italy's national birth rate is declared a national emergency oh the shit country is due to shrink by 2100 there's little to no doubt that there's like god damn and ain't nobody fucking in italy hold on i thought italy had all 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 the 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 wait a minute the the goods you know what i'm saying the the the, the, the good shit ain't nobody busting nuts in italy man y'all got the wrong ethnicity up there man if y'all put some caribbean is up in italy that birth rate going way up see y'all man y'all gotta optimize man optimize the setting people are choosing to not have babies anymore from south korea to the united states to norway oh my god <laughs> who's the green south korea oh shit murderer that green spiked way down man 1960 they were busting mad babies lovely the reality is that people are living longer than ever at the moment when people start to live this long you need new workers to replace the ones that are retired true you need new workers to pay taxes that will eventually fund the pensions of those who retire and you need young people in the workforce to take care of those older people in the 1960s there were six people of working age for every oh person. damn thirty-five. it's expected to be two to one yo so this. by the time i become a, a a senior citizen i'm fucked. so essentially what y'all saying is i need to work until i'm 80 i'm cooked it's ggs then it is what it is. god damn hey now y'all need to start at yeah we need to start having babies man some people might say it's a cost of living issue. Some people might say Definitely that is. it's to do with declining rates of religion in the world. Some people might blame women's liberation movements, for mm. example. If you'd asked me, to be honest, like even just a couple of weeks ago, I would have put the blame squarely on the cost of housing. Mm. In fact, there's this one chart that lives like in my head. Rent Wait, what is this? House prices have grown far more quickly than incomes. Bomba clad. Or as we say in the Bahamas, well, mado, motherfucker. As a Toronto resident, I can confirm the housing prices are ballistic, bro. One bedroom apartments, 2K, man. <laughs> I lied. So they're averaging like 24K now. 24, 25K for a one bedroom, bro. It's a chart that compares the growth of house prices to the growth of incomes in the UK. And intuitively, to me, it feels like that's why people wouldn't want to have kids. And to a lot of people, it feels that way. Mm. But I want to challenge my intuition and maybe we can reach a more nuanced answer as to why this is more of a global problem than necessarily a uh, specific localized. Okay, problem. talk to me. For example, this is a piece of research from the US, which tried to establish what the effect of a $10,000 increase in housing would be on people's decision to have kids. Unsurprisingly, if house prices go up, it corresponds to a 2.4% drop in the decision to have kids she if you are renting. However, if you own your home, you actually become more likely to have kids. Rightfully so, because you have the yeah, amenities and the facilities. When house prices go up in the US, more people actually want to have kids, which is really counterintuitive. Yeah, that's kind of backwards, man. You're telling me house prices go up and you suddenly want to have a baby? Excuse, Excuse me? me? That don't make no sense, man. That's when you start pulling back. God damn, house prices go up. Nigga, I ain't having a baby for the next 20 years, man. Let that shit recover. Clearly housing can't explain the, the full picture. Right. I think the cost of having children is another huge factor that people typically fall back on when they explain the reason. Hey, that's a big cost kids. too. It's, it's too expensive. However, it seems that even paying people to have kids isn't working very well. Taiwan spent more than $3 billion trying to get its citizens to They spent three billion dollars to get niggas to bust some nuts in these girls. What did he say? Hey. That's crazy when your country got to do that, man. That's actually kind of ballistic. I won't lie to you, man. They ain't trying to, well, at the same time, like, uh, he makes some good points. Like, why would you have a kid if, you know? Yo, if they want to solve this problem, cut the damn taxes. <laughs> Yo, cut the damn taxes, cut rent, 
cut grocery costs, make life affordable again, and we'll give you some babies, goddammit. In France, they've spent even more money, about 4% of their GDP on various measures to encourage people to have children. Damn. So perspective, if the US spent 4% of its GDP on family measures, that would be the equivalent of the entire defense budget. Some yeah, we spent, <laughs> shit, my dude said we spend in the defense budget to have babies. Let's go. Huge amount of money on things like tax breaks, things like direct cash transfers, and things like childcare benefits to encourage people to have kids. So clearly there's a bit more to this whole situation than meets the eye initially. And I think we can maybe look at some of the research and evidence because there is a whole body. Also, there's another reason that contributes to some people not wanting to have kids, but that's something we ain't going to go into today. You know what I'm saying? And I don't know if we'll ever go into it, but just know there is another reason. <laughs> there's another reason, man. There's another reason. What I do find really interesting is like how the narrative has changed around this topic mm. because a couple of decades ago, overpopulation was all the rage. That was the, the topic. Around too much people. The number of people on Earth revolved around the fact that there were too many people. And we have two people to blame for this. First of all, we have this dude here. Who the fuck is Thomas Malthus? Who's this? And he is an 18th century economist. And he was the first major figure to really write about this idea of a population boom. He saw that the quality of life in 18th century England was dropping pretty quickly. And he said that there was just too many people and that we'd get to a point where there wouldn't be enough food to sustain the growing population. Uh. And a couple of decades later, another professor wrote about the same topic. His name was Paul Ehrlich. Okay, and Paul. He wrote a book called The Population Bomb. And people really believed them. To kind of put into perspective how... <laughs> <laughs> Yo, why everybody in these black and white photos be looking like they are part of some damn syndicate, man? Bro looking like a very villainous individual. But like what made me chuckle was looking at the book, the image on the book, the guy, and then factoring in the, the year that it was written. I could tell you one thing, man. That book wasn't written for me. <laughs> that book did not factor me in as a, a, a member of society at the time. That's the interesting thing about history, eh? Like, depending on your ethnic group, you really don't care for the, 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 the contents of media past a certain year. You know what I'm saying? It's like, because you know it didn't apply <laughs> kind of thing. It's like, yeah, this, I probably wouldn't have even been able to read this book at that point of time. I want to share a quote by the chairman of the Federal Reserve in the U.S. He said that overpopulation could be more explosive than the atomic or... Oh, this world. man's even extra. On the side of the world in China, these fears of overpopulation promoted China's decision to implement their one-child policy. The whole package of laws and regulations... One-child policy? How many only childs they got? I don't know. <laughs> That is ballistic, man. You telling me there's a, a damn army of kids that don't know what a brother and sister is? A bomb. People from having more than one child. If we fast forward to today, those fears were like clearly unfounded. I think most of us understand that food insecurity is a distribution problem and not an agriculture problem. And instead, we've ended up in the situation where, <laughs> where underpopulation is the problem where there are not enough young people. And I want to take a little bit of time to talk about the US specifically. Okay. I think they've got some really interesting factors that paint a different picture of the fertility crisis to the one that you might have in your head at the moment. This is a graph of the US fertility rates. Okay, what do we got here? Number of births per 1,000 women, ages 15 to 44. Oh shit, it's just been steadily declining. What was going on in, in what was it, 1950? I need so I'm I'm not really well versed on American history. I'm well versed on Bahamian and Caribbean history, a little bit of European history since we're a part of the Commonwealth, but I don't know too much about the US history to be honest. So some people may watch this video and say, You don't know what happened in nineteen fifty? Do you you live under a rock? But before you say that, I will i I'll tell you this. I didn't need to know U.S. history in school since I grew up in the Caribbean. <laughs> so don't shoot me. And it's the kind of graph that makes you want to jump to a specific conclusion or a one-line answer as to what's going on here. But the real interesting part of this graph isn't what it looks like now. It's what it looks like when you kind of break it down by demographics. And thankfully, The Economist has done this for me. If we look at birth rate divided by age, okay. we see some really interesting trends. Somewhat surprisingly, 
the fertility rate amongst women over 30 has actually been steadily rising since the 1990s. Okay. Uh, you might see something else that's quite interesting. Birth rates amongst 15 to 19 year old women in the US dropped dramatically. The actual figure is 77%. Now I would want to believe that's a good thing. Like we don't want we don't want our young women, super young women having babies, you know what I'm saying? In a scenario where the, like it might be tough to raise them. I, that's a good thing, right? Am I am I understanding that correctly? I'm, I'm starting to second guess myself. We don't want that, right? And they actually explained that more than half of the drop in America's total fertility rate is driven by women under 19 choosing to no longer have kids. Around a third of these births would have been unplanned, and the majority of these births would have been on low income. Okay. As well. In the UK, we actually see a similar trend where women at age 20 are having half as many children. Unlike richer women, these young women ah, compensate by got having it. more kids in the future. Right, because back in the day, they used to have kids a lot younger. Got it. That makes sense. That's why this, there was like those big spikes in the 1950s and so on. And now as the years go by, it's slower and slower because everyone's wising up now. Different age, different era. You can't just be popping out like eight babies. I got like at least... I can't lie to you, man. I got more than 10 aunts and uncles. More than 10. What? So I don't know what they were on back in the day, but nigga, I, I, I'm probably capping that too. And I actually want to like take a brief second to have, to have a little aside and talk about the fact that often the most, you know, the most vilified group of people are actually the most important group of people to, to society. I'm sure you've heard young single mothers described as a burden on society or as lazy but clearly these women were actually like the backbone of the economy it's a it's an aspect that i feel many people don't actually think about that's an interesting Obviously, way to look it at it reasonable to say that the reason that no one is having kids is purely because teen pregnancies are down the economic aspect of it is clearly like important it's clearly relevant I don't think it's a coincidence if you look in this graph that the countries that have the lowest fertility rate. Oh, what do we got here? We got selected OECD countries, 2020 GDP per person, $0 at PPP, 2015 prices. Oh, we got ourselves a scatter chart. Oh, I haven't looked at a scatter chart in a minute. Ooh, I got to like refamiliarize myself with the X and Y axis. Oh my God, it's been a minute. Bro, I, <laughs> I used to do data analytics, so I had to dust off some rush just now, but damn. In Europe, countries like Italy, Spain, and Greece are also the countries with the highest youth unemployment, the countries where young people live with their parents for the longest and the economy is in the bin, basically. Really? Is that bad? Young adults why they're not having kids. A lot of them will say that it's simply because childcare is too expensive. What I do find interesting, though, is that the fertility crisis is one that affects the whole world and it affects countries that spend an incredible amount of money on social programs for kids. So this is a quote Talk by to me. Robert Reich. Uh, if you don't know who Robert Reich is, he was U.S. Secretary of- Wait, bro been alive since, since 1946? God damn, my nigga. Nah, this man must be on life support at this point because that, that whew, he, been a, he saw some shit. He saw some different errors, man. I could tell you that much. But he says that Norway spends around $30,000 per child. On Never mind, I take that back. He just made a tweet. When, when was this? Nah, my nigga on two feet. I take that back. My bad. Sorry for the disrespect. Early childhood care. Finland spends $23,000. Germany spends $18,000. And the U.S. spends five hundred per child. Obviously, the U.S. has a huge childcare spending problem. It just doesn't want to invest in young children. But Norway, that's crazy for the U.S. on early childhood care, is still seeing a below replacement birth rate. And when we talk about this problem, we tend to lump men and women in together as if their experience of having children is identical, when there are actually some pretty significant differences that can at least help us explain some more of the trend. To you know something? Bro got an interesting way of like presenting his information, man. Like I wouldn't mind watching another one of these. In other words, like it, 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 it's, a, it's a calm vibe, very informative. Hey, if you didn't know already, your boy like these kind of videos, man. Like, hey, I like to learn shit. Hey, shout out to bro, man. Shout out to bro. This is a good video so far. I can't lie to you, man. I, I, I wasn't sure what I was walking into, but like, this is a good video so far. I like it. Towards choosing to not have children. And one of these big factors is the fact that 
women's earnings drop significantly after having a child mm. and that drop persists decades after they have children this is not so much of a problem for men men who choose to have kids don't earn significantly less than men who don't choose to have kids got it and they don't also experience a short-term drop in the amount that they earn gender-based differences in terms of the experience that's of a good yeah, point to make the maternity leave because because as well ultimately you need two people to well actually you know like I, I think that would be paid right come on man fuck hey i promise y'all i'm not an idiot man i promise y'all don't judge me man please i'm begging y'all this tracks with the work of uh dr matthias dupke he's Dupke. Like the guy to talk about family economics it's his like, area of specialty he talks at length about the differences between low fertility countries and ultra low fertility countries in the countries that have the lowest levels of fertility there is a clear trend of women taking on a greater percentage of the burden of childcare. Mm. so in the really low fertility countries the percentage of childcare duties that is taken on by women can be as high as 80 percent in countries that have slightly fertility ratios this percentage is much closer to 50 50. there's still a huge stigma in some of these countries particularly south korea and japan where women are still expected to spend huge amounts of time at home taking care of children Dang. but they can't survive without having a career or they simply just want a career which is also Ooh, that's a serious question career or family the, the, the dilemma facing women in south korea you know what i ask myself family or life that, that's genuinely my question. Do I want to have kids or do I want to live out some life experiences I haven't had the chance to live because I've been too busy living damn paycheck to paycheck fighting the damn life, the, the battle of life in the grid. It's almost an unfair hand. You know what I'm saying? It's like you, you, you spend, you spend, you grind in college, you graduate, and then you got to grind and find a job. And depending on your country, your city, your ethnicity, your, your, your everything that impacts what kind of job you can get and what kind of jobs you can keep and let me tell you man it's a battle and then you finally get to a position where you can kind of live and then inflation happens so now you're 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 you're, you're battling against the currents so you're telling me i fight through inflation fight through having a career and getting promotions without getting laid off in this 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 damn vicious employment era that we're in and then I add in having a, a kid? Nega, at what point do you live? Like, at, at what point do you do the things you've wanted to do, but couldn't do because you've been trying to grind to get to the point where you could do it? <laughs> you know what I'm saying? Yo. Also very reasonable. The decision to have kids is in some extent a signal of optimism, right? A signal in the belief that you'll have a a good future your kid will have that's literally what it is the world on the whole if you want to do it has a good future i hope of it. and it's because you think you can handle it disparate factors all play into a single idea of optimism about the world there's a really good research group called our world in data that they're now nah, bro is deep in the data eh? some data on how optimistic people feel about the world and you can see that there's this concentration ah, of rich, damn. low fertility countries at the bottom of this graph and i think it helps us at least explain somewhat why the countries that are even trialing just direct one-off cash payments are not seeing remarkable south korea has so few babies it is offering new parents ten thousand five hundred dollars to have some fucking babies man South Korean parents are being showered with cash, but experts say money alone will not fix the country's fertility woes. My God, man. It's a, it's a drought in South Korea right now. It's a drought. But rightfully so, man. I, hey, listen. I'm not trying to have no babies either, man. I can't lie to you. I'm not trying to do that, so I, I could understand why. Listen, man. Just make living costs. Make it more affordable. Make it so we could live like human beings again. And you will get your damn fertility rate increase. Giving someone a one-off payment doesn't necessarily make them feel like the world is going to be a better place. Right. In the next it's only 10,000 10, versus the expenses you're, you're going to incur for that baby's life. Extended maternity leave. And that hasn't worked because that has actually increased the risk for women. That they're going to be out of the workforce for longer and they're going to struggle to recover the income that they once had. Yep. There are these macro factors like the gender wage gap, yep. which are kind of creating like a negative pressure and it's not enough to balance that negative pressure but importantly it's also worth mentioning life is that fucked. a lot of the drop in fertility is actually a good thing it represents that people have agency people can actually choose 
whether or not to have children, especially women. Mm. In fact, we use the term fertility crisis when it's not really a fertility crisis. It's a, it's a worker crisis. Governments aren't trying to create self-actualized, happy, positive individuals. They're trying to create meat for the grinder. Literally, bro, good video, man. Good video, my dude. What a way to end it. He ended it on a mic drop. Like, literally, man, we're just cogs in the fucking wheel. We're bits in the bite. Goddamn uh, 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 a speck in the system, man. Yo, when I walk to work, it's the craziest thing, man. Bro, if you don't have your music on, you'd be on a street with like 50 people, man. Everybody walking in absolute silence going straight like robots and I, I and i had this weird like this weird perspective where it's like we're all on the streets walking like robots going across to our streets this and that and all of our leaders all of our managers in the in the skyscrapers in the high rooms looking down as the the damn little the little rats go and and, and do the labor it's bro it's not the way to live man in my opinion it's not the way to live, man. Like, I always try to encourage myself to follow what I would like, follow a creative passion that could like distract me from the, the work grind and maybe turn it into something big, man. Turn it into something I can use because like, I cannot, I can't envision a life where you, you live that grind forever, man. It, it, it's next level. But this was a very informative video. I might actually check out more of his stuff, to be honest. I don't mind this kind of this kind of content. You know what I'm saying? Like your boy like to your boy like to learn. So we might tune in. You know what I'm saying? Get locked in for some more informative uh, uh, data dives. But if you enjoyed this video, hit that like button, sub up, show your boy some love, and I'll see y'all for the next video, man. Peace out.